what's your true life story that nobody will believe? My dad was married twice before my mom. When he was with his second wife, he would travel a lot for work. Which I knew. What I didn't know was that one night he came home to find his wife in bed with another man. He actually walked in on them. He left the room and came back with a gun. He shot the man dead and wounded his wife. He turned himself in immediately and was sent to prison. He was sentenced to 10 years in a maximum security prison. In the last year he was in prison, which was the fourth year, he got out for good behavior, and since the judge ruled it a crime of passion, he met the prison minister. The prison minister was my mom. My dad is a murderer, and my mom was the minister. I am the product of a conjugal visit. My best friend did it with my sister, so I did it with his sister, and now she's pregnant. My best friend, 17M, and my sister, 18F, my best friend had sex with my sister for revenge for his ex. It all started when I seemed to have overheard a conversation between the two of them about when they were going to sneak out. I did not think much of it, so I let it go. Two weeks passed, and my sister was not in her room. In the morning, she was back at the house and did not tell me or my parents what happened. One week after my friend called me a brag, he had sex with my sister without me or my parents knowing. Three weeks after that, me and a group of friends, including his sister, 15F, and me, 15M, went to a nearby cinema. After the movie finished, I took her to her house. It turns out her parents were not home, nor was her brother, she told me to get a drink inside. She took me to her room to show it to me, then it all went down. It was too late for plan B, so she is eight months away from childbirth, I told my friend. He was speechless since the sister was or is the angel child of the house. I told my parents, and they were not too mad, but my sister couldn't handle it in part. I think it's her fault for starting all this because I would not have ended where I'm now. I'll update you guys with what happens. I am pretty sure my mom is having a sexual relationship with my grandfather, her father, and I don't know what the right thing to do is. I just want to start off by saying that I'm super disturbed and might regret writing this, but I feel like I must get it out of my system. Even if I just save it in draft and never post. It's been bubbling inside me, and I don't know what the hell to do about it. I am not asking for advice, but I do hope I will feel better after I write it down. I play it back in my head and it does seem wild, but it's the truth, and it's laying heavy on me. I don't know how this sub works, but please be sensitive with whatever you have to say. I am on the brink. So, my grandmother died about eight months ago, and ever since, my mom has been going to visit her father much more often. Sometimes we all go together our entire family, I mean but as it's hard to align our schedules, most of the time she goes alone and sleeps over for a few days, usually the weekend. In my head, he was one of the nicest men ever. That's why this hit me really hard and threw me into a panic attack, because it's like seeing someone really decent do something you'd never expect. My mom did cheat on my dad a few years ago, and they fought a lot, but they worked it out, and now they are doing just fine. So, although I know she has done some stuff in the past, this was super disturbing for me, and I am honestly feeling sick even as I am writing this stuff but I'm hoping it will help me feel better to put it out there anonymously. He lives in a suburb, two hours away from the city where we live. This September, I had finished with work and school for the month and had lots of free time, so I decided to surprise him and visit him. I usually wouldn't go unannounced, but I knew he was alone and always eager to see me. I don't live with my mom, so I didn't know whether she'd be there but I was assuming she might since she has been in his place pretty much every second weekend ever since the funeral. So, I used an Uber, which cost me a sh asterisk toad. I was pretty tired but still wanted to make him feel good since he has been inviting me to stay there for a long time and I finally could spend some time with him. And of course, my mom was there when I arrived, she seemed surprised and happy, as was my grandpa. So, we talked and watched some stuff together just average family time. He has a nice place there, so we took some walks in the nature nearby, everything was pretty good. We stayed for two nights. The only odd thing that happened was that in the middle of the first night, I heard some weird grunting, but it didn't sound sexual at all, 
I just assumed it was some animal outside or something. I didn't make anything of it. I had completely forgotten about it. On the second night, I heard the same thing and immediately remembered that I had heard it the day before as well. So, I got up to see what's up. I opened the window, and there was nothing out there, and even worse, I realized it was coming from inside the house, like the hallway. Then, I realized that it was coming from my grandfather's room, and when I started listening more closely, I realized that it's actually very sexual, and it's just like an old man moaning like a creepy pervert. I didn't even think it was that disturbing, but I was pretty grossed out. I didn't really want to tell my mom about it, but I did find it kind of funny, like it was kind of T.A., if you know what I mean. I was like, maybe let me just wake her up and ask her if she has also heard anything, and maybe she'll discover it on her own when she wakes up and hears it instead of me having to tell her about it. But then she was not in her room. I went to the bathroom, and she wasn't there. The house isn't huge, and there is no other place she could have been but inside his room. And why the hell would he be moaning with her in there if they were not doing something? There is no other explanation. My body literally went stiff, and tears started coming up immediately. I went back to the guest room and went to bed, weeping. I don't, for the love of me, understand if they were not worried or how they didn't think I could potentially wake up and hear them. In the morning, it was very hard to act normally. My mom and I left on Sunday at around 5 p.m., and everything was normal afterwards, but I can't shake this feeling that I should tell my dad. What if I am wrong, though? I have been having such a horrible time ever since, and I do my best to not have to meet up with my mom. I have only seen her once after this time, and I just tell them I'm really busy with my internship and stuff. I am so disturbed, and I hate that my family is like this. I can't tell my friends because they will surely be super grossed out by my family, and I don't want that to happen. I can't tell my brother because he's still 15 and doesn't deserve that to be done to him. The only person I can realistically tell this to is my dad, but then what the hell will happen? It honestly made me even start digging in my past to figure out if I have some repressed memories, like maybe I knew all along. But absolutely not. I can't say that I have. I tried being honest with myself, but no, no, no. This is so disgusting and shocking to me, and my body has probably just been running on cortisol in the last few months. I do plan on going to therapy, though. Edit, I just have to add that maybe I was too vague in my description, but once I was an inch from the door of his room, I was pretty sure it was sex moaning. Sure, he could have been in pain, but you don't moan repeatedly as if you're having intercourse when you're in pain. It wasn't like a single moan, it was rhythmic. I actually shudder explaining this, but I feel like if I'm going to write all this, it should at least be clear that I am positive it wasn't groaning in pain. And as for my mom being somewhere else, in her room, her phone was sitting on the bed, and all of her clothes, as well as shoes, were thrown around in her room. She definitely hadn't snuck out. Why would she go out for a walk barefoot in the cold without a jacket and leave her phone randomly on her bed? This is why I can't bring myself to think that way. It was also somewhere around 2 a.m. at number 2, I decided to confront my mom, but not in an aggressive manner. I will just mention it casually and see how she reacts. Someone mentioned seeing how her body language will be, and I think that's a great idea. It's pretty scary, but I feel like I'd regret not doing anything about this and leaving it simmer inside me. I thought of doing it over the phone because that feels safer, but I think it needs to be in person so I can follow her reaction. I will just have to find a way to meet with her in a non-visible manner, because she must have noticed me avoiding meeting her in the past month. So straight up inviting her to meet and then mentioning that would be two on the nose. And it no. 3. For those of you asking for updates, I am meeting my mom in two days, and I'll try to bring it up as I said and then watch her reaction. Thanks for the advice. I will update here or make a new post. I don't know what's better. I have been pretending to be married to pick up chicks. So, like the title says. I bought marriage rings to pretend that I was married because I don't know where I read that it helped pick up chicks, it worked, and I have been having an affair with a girl. 
well, all was well because I just wanted something casual until today. She sent me that she found my wife and if I don't divorce her quickly, she will tell her everything. I laughed pretty hard since, like I said, I am not married, and that's the worst bluff ever. I just wanted to get it out of my chest. I've realized my wife is a predator. I never used to really think too much about it or find it weird. But seeing my daughter grow up, it's been harder to ignore. She's 13, and it kind of finally dawned on me how wrong our relationship is. I haven't said anything yet and don't know how to really deal with it. My high school had a, I guess you could call it a mentor program, where they had some older students come to help the new ones adjust to high school. The idea was that we would be able to talk to older students about things and get advice that teachers wouldn't, though it wasn't intensive, huge, or anything. I had just started high school, so I would have been 12, while she was 18. I was a shy kid and struggled with school, but she basically took me under her wing. No other mentor student acted like she did, but she made it seem like it was about helping me. She first said I reminded her of herself when she was younger, while later on she would say it's because she loved me. It started normally but slowly got more inappropriate. When I was 14, we started secretly dating, and we started openly dating when I was 16. We married and had our daughter at 19. My parents didn't care, they liked her. And still do. They think I'm lucky to have a wife like her. For me, it all seemed so normal. I loved her, and I still love her so much. Our relationship has been so happy. Yet just imagining it happening to my daughter makes me feel so disgusted. The more I think about it, the more conflicted I feel. I love her, and I'm so happy with her. I don't want to lose her, but I feel so angry and disgusted. I don't know how she could do that, but then I can't imagine life without her, especially our daughter. It feels so horrible, but it's not like I can do anything about it. I don't even know if I want to. It's just not fair. Edit. Because I've already had like five comments on it. Not all. School systems are like those in the US. Year 7 is high school. Most kids are 12 and turning 13.